Hey, boss. Man, listen. I think little baby for me has been the most the most heavy rotation this year. The most heavy rotation, man. Shout out to little baby, man. The man just keeps on putting out ridiculous music. He has such a ridiculous catalog just that fast. So maybe maybe he's been putting in work way longer than I know of and I'm just catching up. If so, pardon, give me a late pass. I think I've been on him for what? The last two years? About two years? Two and a half years? But anyway, what up, y'all? It's your boy ARP. Rare Bit Entertainment is the movement as always. Here we are, episode uh, four for Sorry Is True. Uh, initially, I wasn't even going to number my episodes. I just wanted the ability to drop, you know, put up my content, put up my little blogs, put up my little topics that I want to talk about. But I think numbering my episodes is going to keep me motivated. You know what I'm saying? Because the thing about the podcast space, the thing about the content world is um, it looks easy, but it's not. It's not. Uh, to get up here and rock out with y'all, you know what I'm saying, every week. Some people do it every day, go over these topics, you know what I'm saying, break things down, keep things fun and interesting for y'all. I see y some of y'all tweeting me, yo, what's up, man? We got used to the morning drops. That's how I start my morning. Where you at, AR? That consistency isn't easy. You know, you turn around and some of these people that have been doing it for years, one year, five years, whatever, you know, like, like the Joe Button podcast and, um, you got a uh, drink champs going crazy and you got people that blog and do podcasts too. And they stepping up and stepping out and doing all crazy things. The Vlads of the worlds and the DJ academics of the worlds, man, these guys are putting in a lot of work, you know what I'm saying? And, um, I really, really want to motivate myself by numbering my shit. So being here with episode number four, yeah, you know, I can't wait till I get to episode 400, but how was y'all week out there? I mean, what did y'all get into? I'm going to try to always start my episodes, you know, just, just lighthearted, catching up with everybody. I'm not recording every day. I don't have that, that ability, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'll just give y'all some little backdrop how the week went for me. Nothing too crazy. Um, I'm a very busy person. I'll continue to say that on camera. It's kind of like my little exit back door as an excuse if I miss a week, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, we do have a lot of topics to go over today. We got a lot of topics to go over today. We're going to talk about the uh, the Dama Netflix series. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Ime Adoka, you know, the coach that's under heavy controversy right now, being suspended for one year, the, the, the coach, the lead head coach of the Boston Celtics. We're going to talk about some battle rap stuff. Um, I got a reaction to a recent little Boosie video that I've seen. We're gonna talk about some uh, some other some other stuff that's been happening during the week. We got a lot of stuff to go over, but yeah, man, I hope the week went well for everybody. I was temporarily, you know, uh, forced to record in a different spot. That's why y'all seen some of the last blogs or like little pieces that I put up that had the green screen behind me. But I'm back now. This is the uh, the location that I really really set up for my podcast, so I'm back here now. But some of that content that I recorded while I still had the green screen behind me, when I had to you know jump over there for a second, I got more of that to release. I'm gonna get that out for y'all. I got some remaining pieces to drop with uh, an interview I did with Doggy Diamonds. Shout out to the homie Doggy Diamonds. I got some more pieces to put up uh, from an interview I did with 40 Cal. Shout out to my homie 40 Cal. Um, and Doggy Diamonds has an interview that that same day we recorded, probably like almost two weeks ago at this point. Uh, I jumped on his channel as well. So keep an eye on his channel. You know what I'm saying? Doggy Diamonds TV. Uh, he's got like five channels. So for all I know, it might be dropping on a different channel. But, you know, shout out, follow Doggy Diamonds, subscribe to Doggy Diamonds. Um, He's got an interview with me. He asked me a, a bunch of stuff that I think people, especially in the battle rap culture, want to hear me speak about. You know, it got me talking about lawsuits and um, politics and certain battlers that I may have, you know, had small fallouts with, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, the stuff that I, I've never been too uncomfortable to answer. Y'all know me. You know what I'm saying? But um, I never script my interviews. I never have and I never will. You know, when people... They, they, they hit me up to interview me and they ask me, yo, AR, you know, is there anything you don't want to talk or don't want to come up? I tell people I don't script interv interviews. I don't script questions. You know, that's just on me. If I feel like speaking on it, I'm going to speak about it. If I want to be um, professional, overly professional about it, I will. 
if I feel like I'm in the clear to, to release some details about whatever the given topic is, or even if I need some get back, I'm human. You know what I'm saying? Even if I feel like, nah, there's some shit I need to address, you know, I'm going to speak my piece. You know, that's that's always been me. So shout out to everybody that supported me and knows how I give it up over here. But um, yeah, let's start jumping into these topics. Um, I think the first one that we just have to get into is this Dama series. We have to get into this fucking Dama series. <laughs> like, yo, and what's so crazy is... um. A lot of us know about this. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of younger people out there in the world that are watching this Netflix series and they never heard of Jeffrey Dahmer. They never really knew about it, you know. But for me, you know, I was around. I was definitely old enough to be in tune, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm older now. And, and you know, I, my, my brain capacity and, and my wisdom and my life experiences have grown so much since when I was a child or when I was a teenager, whenever it was, when this was happening, you know, so I understand more and I, it makes me even want to analyze it more and want to try to really look into it a little bit more and say like, yo, how do people turn out like this? And we're going to get into some of that. But I felt the same way when I watched the OJ series, you know, with uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., it was like I was young enough to understand what was going on. I felt even that racial tension, you know, outside the atmosphere had this, this, this like us versus y'all type of, it was, it was a bugged out time during that OJ trial. You know what I'm saying? But fast forward, when I watched the series and I can understand a little bit more, you know, you see a, a bunch of different things with different perspectives. And that's what's happening to me with this Dama shit. It's like I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah, I knew that he was eating people. I knew there was this crazy guy, this serial killer. You know, we watched like the Martin stand up. What was that? You so crazy. You know, he had a whole joke about that. You know what I'm saying? About Dama lowering people up to his crib and was just eating people. You know what I'm saying? Like he made light of it. You know what I mean? So I guess at that age when this was all unfolding, all, that's really all that stuck in my mind. This crazy serial killer guy that's bringing people up to his crib and eating them. But Netflix is just turning this shit into like this whole breakdown of, of his childhood and, you know, some of the elements that may have made him how he is. And that's a topic within itself. Do y'all believe that somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer is born like that? Do you believe that he's, he's developed into that from his life circumstances and the things that he's experienced? Do you think it's a combination of both? <sighs> I'm on episode six. So I just finished episode six. So I'm more than halfway through. And I'm picking up on like the, the little details that they're dropping to almost suggest that he may have been created like that. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I, I'm, I'm not giving no passes. There's no passes to, to being like that. And even if I take a step backwards, right? One of the common words that you would call a Jeffrey Dahmer is crazy. That's one of the, the, the automatic words that come to mind. Crazy. Like, well, dude is crazy. All right. The shit that he's doing, he's crazy. You ever see that, that breakdown about the behind the scenes of Hollywood by Dave Chappelle? He's, you know, kind of talking about how weird it was and not wanting to wear a dress when certain, you know, studios and filmmakers were asked, you know, so adamant about him wearing a dress. Or I spoke about this before on the channel. You know what I'm saying? But he gave a good kind of synopsis of the word crazy. He was like, Calling somebody crazy is not a good thing to call people because it's dismissive. Now, what he's trying to imply there is saying that we tend to call people crazy when we don't understand them. You don't understand something you don't, about somebody, call them crazy. And for me, I think that might be one of the reasons why I'm kind of overanalyzing this Netflix series. You know, because it makes you want to understand people a little bit more. Because if you ever encounter these type of people, yep, if, if you see these type of signs of, of, I guess, weirdness, right? And even that, you can kind of put in maybe the same category as the word crazy, like maybe it's dismissive. But there's still signs. Like, I'm damn near educating myself watching this shit. Like, how, how does somebody become like that? And they're putting shit in there. They're putting shit in there. You know, they, they, they put in there, of course... Um, the scenes of his family fighting, you know, his moms and his and, and his pops, you know, separating all that type of stuff. And, you know, moms peels off with the younger child and, and basically abandons him and the father and all that. You know, he goes to what is that like custody court and everything like that. 
we can't put that nowhere near a piece of determining how you become Jeffrey Dahmer because how many of us have been through these type of situations where you know the, the, the household is broken or, or daddy's not there or mommy's not there or maybe neither one of your parents is there. Maybe you grew up on your own and, and you know what I'm saying in, in a foster home or something like that. But they put that in there. They put that in there. That's one thing that they put in there. One thing that's heavily suggested that they put in there as well or suggestive that they put in there as well is his attraction to men and his sexuality. That's one thing that I didn't know from when this was going down and it was actually happening versus me watching it on Netflix. I didn't know that Jeffrey Dahmer was gay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that he was attracted to men back then. But one thing's clear here. They're definitely trying to put his attraction to men as one of the ingredients as to why he is or how he became how he is. But even that to a degree, it's a little bit of a stretch. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, this is America. We, we, we've been here long enough. You know what I mean? And we have been through these periods where we see um, different lifestyles and different cultures, even different religions treated as minority, right? And um, that leads me to another point, you know, and I, I don't want to jump around too much because I want to stay focused on these ingredients that they're kind of trying to depict. But even if I jump off for a second, the times that this was all based in, that kind of adds to it a little bit because if we stay on the part about his sexuality, right, and him being gay, that even shows how people are reacting as far as some of the, the police negligence, right? Now, some of the shit that they put in there is just like, yo, this cop is dumb or these cops is dumb or they're not reacting enough. Like the neighbors are being smarter than the fucking cops. You know what I'm saying? But think about you know, the one where, or the, or the piece where, you know, um, he's got the cops coming up to the crib and he's like, he, he lets them come in. Like he's bold. You know what I'm saying? Or either that, or he's just so calm. It's just like, yeah, come on in. You know, I'm still going to get away with this or whatever. But the cops kind of got this reaction almost as like they're grossed out. You know what I'm saying? All due respect. That's what they're showing. That's, that's, that's the picture that they're painting for those times. As if once again, back then, you know, it, it, it wasn't really as open or treated as non like a minority. That's the point that I'm making here. You know, as if it's like strange, they treating you to be gay back then, right? And you see that even in the call, right? When they played the real life call that really happened of the neighbor that called into the police, like, yo, are you sure it's not an underage boy? What you hear what 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 the police officer is saying on the phone, he's almost like hesitant to go close to it. It's like, nah, listen, we don't get involved in that or whatever. They wouldn't act like that today. They definitely wouldn't act like that today. But back then, they're kind of showing that. They're showing that the times of how people reacted or how people really thought you was almost like an alien to have a different sexual preference back then. You know what I'm saying? So they put that element in there. There was another one though that they put in there. And um, I don't remember the term, but you know, he was sitting down with like a psychologist, a psychologist or something like that. And um, he called it something of like, when you're attracted to like the shininess of, of your internal organs, I never even heard of it before, but he says something like the psychiatrist says something like that to him. And they showed that that was relevant because, you know, we all mature here. I'm going to talk to y'all mature because that's how I am. So I, sometimes I try to mask my words a little bit because I know there's children and, you know, little immature, like little clowns that watch on the internet. There's still the internet, but I want to still be mature as possible. You know, there's a scene where Dom is, you know, he's getting himself off. Right. Or he's trying to. And he's looking at, you know, a magazine with women in it and it's not working. Then he starts having thoughts of, you know, his hand holding an organ from back from when he was dissecting shit. And we'll get into that in a second, too. And that was then the time where he started to get off. You know what I'm saying? So that's a condition. That's another element that they're throwing in there. Another ingredient into how does this person become like this? You know what I'm saying? Now, speaking of, you know, the dissections and whatever, I could see that being a valid element. And they showed that early on in the series. It may have been the first or the second episode. So when he was a kid, um, he still lived with his moms and his pops at the time. 
His mom smells something, you know, foul in the crib. Turns out there was like a dead possum underneath the uh, the patio or something like that. So him and his father, you know, use like a rake, pull out the dead possum or whatever. And his father tells him like, look, there's a hole in his head. Like it must have got, you know, attacked by a, a coyote, survived the attack, but then crawled underneath the patio and died. You know what I'm saying? And um, he kind of intrigued Jeffrey Dama at that point and explaining that to him. Then he takes the dead possum into the garage with him. And they dissect it. They dissect it. And then after that, Pops and the son, Jeffrey Dahmer, when they're on the road, they be pulling over for roadkill. And they be tossing the roadkill in the trunk, taking it home and dissecting the roadkill. So they kind of show that as an ingredient. And I can see that in a, in a weird way, maybe being valid. Because you're kind of turning this kid on into the internals and the organs and you know what I'm saying? And remember he's cannibalizing people. He's, he wants to see people's insides at times and he's holding on to some of these possessions and shit like that. As he's treating them as possessions, like the predator did like the movie predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's keeping some of this shit around the house, like trophies, like the bones that he used on a board game. So it's just like his pops maybe accidentally played a small role in him being turned on to that shit. And then fast forward when he's in school and they had the class for, you know, dissecting um, what was like a little small pig or something like that. He asked the teacher to take one home. The teacher's like, man, 20 years of doing this, nobody ever asked me that. But hell, you want to take it home? Go ahead, take it home. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Be my guest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what you want, an A plus, I guess? Hey, you know what I'm saying? So that was definitely weird. And he's obviously being turned on by stuff like that. And there's another big element that they're showing too. He has a problem with separation. You catch that? I'm telling y'all, like I'm paying attention to some of these points because I'm, I'm y'all think I'm bullshit when I say I, I'm educating myself because I want to see the warning signs and people like that. You got to understand the world because we all live here. There's people here, obviously like this. You better understand the world, understand the world. But, um, he has a problem with separation. He has a problem with separation. Um, the thing with the mannequin, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and when people leave and walk away, you know, he has a problem. He gets aggressive. He's normally one of the calmest people in the world, but he gets aggressive. Like, where are you going? Like, when are you coming back? Just like, you know, the guy he was dating that's deaf. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he was starting to freak out when dude was leaving. Dude was like, yeah, I'll be back next week. He was freaking out. He's like, he was going to you know, off him right there because he just didn't want him to leave. And maybe that also plays into him keeping things, keeping body parts and also wanting to cannibalize these body parts because maybe he thinks that that makes him a part of them or makes them a part of him. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and we've seen stuff like that in certain movies where, um, damn, what movie, what movies was it where they feel like they, they eat something and then it becomes a part of them. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? So he has a clear, clear issue with separation, you know, and his father picked up on a lot of the signs. His father seen how weird he was, you know, like there's times where his father is just like, I don't know what to do with this kid. You know what I'm saying? Like when he was getting out of the, um, what was it? Uh, he was, he was locked up or he was in some detention center or whatever. And he asked him, he's just like, man, so did you, did you speak to anybody when you was in there? Maybe a psychiatrist or somebody, you know? And Jeffrey's like, nah, I just stayed to myself. His pops is like, fuck. This nigga ain't gonna change. Sent him to the army. Nah, that, 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 that didn't do it. That didn't help. That wasn't gonna do nothing. When him and his, his new girlfriend, the father's new girlfriend, went to Jeffrey's crib, his apartment, you know what I'm saying? And, he, and you know, he's like, oh, you got a fish tank. And Jeffrey's like, yo, sometimes I just sit here for hours and watch them swim. His pops is like, You know what I'm saying? Like his pops knew that he had a weird son. He knew that he had a weird son. And they show a lot of that. Like, again, as much as you can say, maybe some of those characteristics he was born with, um, I guess you got to just continue to study the human mind and, and human, human, human body or whatever to, to learn stuff like that and figure out whether that's possible or not. But they definitely show that there's elements that made him become what he is. 
And yo, this this episode six, where they almost bring in almost like a like a like a like a co-star almost because they really give him a big focus. You know, the guy that he was he was dating that was deaf. And let me let me say this too about the show. Um, it's done extremely well. It's done very well. The acting is all great. You know, we watch some shows and just be like, damn, this acting is shit. Like they they're nailing it. These characters are nailing it. They really put this one together, you know, and, and maybe that's another reason why it's hitting the way it's hitting. Yeah, a lot of people talking about the series right now. There's there's some scenes in here that's going to bother y'all. Like, even in the very first episode, because they came out guns blazing, there was parts in the first episode that was, it was getting to me like, oh, whoa. You know what I'm saying? They they go in there. They are going there. But, you know, from a creation of, of trying to portray this for what it was, it was an extreme situation. They're completing that objective. They're delivering it, and it's it's feeling the stream. You know what I'm saying? But um, back to like the deaf guy. You know, even the way they built his character up, the deaf guy. You know, they really made us connect to him. They they made us they made us respect him as a as a character. You know, like he was looking for the right things in life. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to be some fast guy just all out there wilding out, being crazy. He was, you know, trying to get himself on the right track. What didn't come off like a bad guy at all. Family man, respected his family. His sister, you know, was pregnant, named, said, I want to name uh, my baby after you and everything. Like they're showing these, these, these pieces to put him in that type of light, you know. And to a degree, he, he temporarily changes Dama, I guess. Maybe that's the wrong words to put it. But they're through this this deaf guy, they're almost trying to show a compassionate side to Dama. They they almost get away with that. They almost make you feel like, damn, like like maybe they're clicking because they both have differences in the world because they they clearly show what it's like to be deaf in this world. Like the scene where the deaf guy and his two deaf friends are sitting down at that at that restaurant table and all the audio is just mute and they're having a, a conversation using sign language. It's such a dope scene. That's a, that's a dope scene, son. You know what I'm saying? But they're showing what it's like going through this world and society being deaf and how much challenges it, it, it creates, whether it's getting a job, whether it's... um. Dating, so him trying to date guys, you know, and some of these guys, they buy him a drink, they find out he's deaf, and they're like, yo, I'm out, you know what I'm saying, Just enjoy your drink. So building up that character and showing him in that type of perspective, and then here goes this weird guy, Jeffrey Dahmer, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, Jeffrey Dahmer damn near sees a different a different side of people that he would normally just want to murder day one or eat day one or keep with keep keep their bodies day one. You know, this guy kind of changes him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Makes him clean up his house, makes him stop drinking a lot for a second. And that's another ingredient that they actually put in there. He's a heavy drinker. Speaking of the ingredients of how the, he may have became how he's become. So if we break down what they're showing, you know, um, his mother and father, you know what I'm saying? Going through shit. Um, his father turning them out, possibly, with dissecting animals and how they were collecting roadkill and all that type of stuff. Um, his heavy drinking. Um, his attraction to men. Um, and and how that may have tied. But I think his attraction to men, they're trying to tie into two other pieces, which is the cannibalism and uh, him having an issue with separation. Of, I just want to keep... I want to hold. I want to, I want this, this this to stay with me. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just weird, you know. And and then like that other that last piece that um the psychiatrist told them, whatever that phrase is for somebody that might possibly be intrigued or turned on to shiny organs or to shiny things. Like it's just oh, so I don't know what else is coming um in this last four episodes. Because the way that they do it chronologically is, you know, that first episode is, is when he gets caught, you know, so 
they do it real well, shifting some of the time periods of going to when he's a kid and showing how we got to this spot. And sometimes they jump, they show you one thing and they jump over here and then they come back to something that they showed you earlier where it's like, okay, that's the tie in from earlier. You know what I'm saying? They, they're doing a great job with this, but, um, it's sick, man. It's, it's just real, real sick. Um, that's just another thing. I could keep going about this show. That's another thing that I didn't know when it was unfolded. I didn't know that he was, this was just happening in like this like little small apartment with all these neighbors. It's like right next to you to the, to the point where his neighbors is hearing shit through the walls and through the vents. Their neighbors is, is trying to tell on them at times like, yo, there's something going on with my neighbor and the cops is kind of egging them. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's wild. Like, I guess the visuals that I had back in the day when this was really happening was that it was some wild guy that probably lived in some, the woods or something with some crib where nobody's around, nobody can hear him or nothing like that. And he's just getting away, bring driving people up through this long dirt road into his crib and he's stashing bodies. This shit was happening in a fucking apartment building. When he got caught, they had to evacuate the whole fucking building as like a, a safety thing like like because of the smells and the toxins or what they had people coming in with them fucking like them them suits them 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 type suits like when things is like toxic some fucking area 51 type shit like it was wild man this motherfucker had a bat of acid in his living room yo this show is crazy but um it's a big piece of can I call it American history? Because to me, they're just these big occurrences where the whole world knows about it. If not the whole world, at least the whole country, right? Like the OJ trial, it's like a piece of history. 9-11, obvious, you know what I'm saying? Um, the DC sniper, Jeffrey Dahmer, um, people, you know, have unwrapped and, and, and depicted and done shows and series of movies on the on the, the the mafia for how many because it's a piece of like history you know what i'm saying like when the mafia had a, was a stronghold it's like the, this jeffrey Dahmer shit really is a big story you know and if you would have said his name to me without this series coming up i would have told you exactly who he is yeah some crazy serial killer that was eating people minus all the details that i'm able to see now but fast forward i don't know whether this happened 20 30 i don't know how many years ago like yeah i knew about it and i ain't forget it but watching this right now, this is crazy, man. I would suggest everybody watch it. Um, you got to have a, a, a solid stomach at times. There's some scenes that are just like, oh, fuck it, spoiler alert, man. There's a scene where he drinks some blood. Like It's just, oh, it's like one of the nastiest things. Like, oh, oh. I do do this. It's a sick guy, man. He's sick as shit. <laughs> 